damn, Kyle. You going off. Oh, hold on. What's good, y'all? It's your boy Cam back with a YouTube video, and today we're we'll gonna be checking out slavery. The details they don't teach you in school with Candace Owens. Let's get it, bro. Look back at, at your ancestors. Look back at your, your grandparents. Look back at what they did, uh, what they lived through, the, the seeds that they planted so that you can afford to be in the circumstance that you are in today. If you are a black American and you are breathing in the United States today, you are the luckiest, among the luckiest of black people that have ever lived anywhere on the face of the planet. Yeah. That is an incredible statement. All of human history, the luckiest black people that have ever lived on the face of the human planet are the ones that are living and breathing in America today, okay? If you understand that, and you should understand it by simply saying, where would you like to live in Africa? For all that, 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 that hoopla about, they took us from Africa, find me a, a, a black American that will tell you they want to move back to Africa. I will, listen, right now. Or Europe. Why I is it, no. book, I, I'll book the flight for them, right? For any person that says we were stolen from our ancestors, I can't assume. She kind of speaking facts, bro. You know what I'm saying? She's speaking facts right here. I can't lie. Like, I, I, I'm just being real. I'm just being real, bro. I'm just being real. I, like, I wouldn't want to go. I'm pledging that I will book the flights if you renounce your U.S. citizenship for you to go live back in Africa. I don't know. Like, some, some people say, like, uh, there are good parts of Africa, and it's not, it's not all what we see, like, you know? Like, it's not all bad. So I don't know if I still go to copy of blackout here don't. because the galleys have not arrived yet. They have but not the, arrived. The galleys are on the way. Mm -hmm. I, I know that a lot of what we discussed here, obviously, is what blackout is about. Um, but what what maybe did I miss, Dave or Ruby. should we should we hit on or whatever um, else? You know, so blackout for me, it was I really wanted to first and foremost lay out my personal story. There's been a lot of conjecture about where I came from, how I became conservative. Is she a fraudulent conservative? And uh, all of that craziness because people don't realize that I just was apolitical, if anything else. Like, so I, to be clear, you're not some sort of secret agent. No, you, remember, you really have been there through all of I've it. I've been what there I since the beginning. Through, I mean, yeah. the YouTubers, like, digesting my entire life, saying, like, she must be a plant, like, I mean, a Soros plant. I'm like, I've never even voted. Like, yeah. I'm, I'm like, <laughs> I literally, prior to getting uh, getting into things, I had, I genuinely just was not politically inclined. Yeah. Um, and I just thought I had to be a Democrat. What? I thought I had to be a liberal. And, you know, looking in the retrospect, I realized how foolish that is. Um, you know, that That's I didn't realize that everything was really, no, that everything that bad happened in my life was really routed to uh, bad policies and bad politicians. Um, but I wanted to first lay out just my personal story. Um, you know, the subtitle of the book is How Black America Can Make Its Second ex Escape from the Democrat Plantations. Okay. Um, and I do believe, um, I say this all the time, people get upset, um, that black Americans are still enslaved today. Um, that the left mm. just got smarter and they realized that you, you, you can't enslave people, um, you, their bodies. You can't have black, black Americans on the plantation anymore, but you can still have black Americans doing all the work for you and reaping no benefit. And that is a structure that we see today between Black America and the Democrat Party. We are doing all of the work. We get we carry them over the finish line, and we benefit not in one single way. Um, and so I really kind of lay out that argument um, and, and talk about what slave life was really like, uh, the breakdown of family, why it was necessary for families to be broken down, uh, to trade, constantly be trading um, uh, slaves from one plantation to the no to the next. They could they could have no feelings for one another. Um, at Frederick Douglass, uh, in his autobiography, the first couple of pages, and he starts talking about his life as a slave, uh, he talks about the fact that when his mother died, he felt nothing. Uh, mm. When his sisters were traded, and he felt nothing. He had no sense of kinship, no, no wow. familial love uh, for his own blood. Mm, uh, that was crazy. necessary to the institution of slavery. We still have that kinship and that relationship and that community wow. still broken down all of these years later, despite the Reconstruction era post-slavery, uh, which we saw black American families getting back together. We were we were doing something. Um, it's all been wiped at a, away. At a higher rate, a by higher the way, rate. until about 72 or so. Yeah, in the 1950s, yeah. Uh, black Americans were outpacing whites in terms of economic growth. Um, and then immediately following you know, the, the 1960s and the Great Society Act um, and, and the systemic oppression, which started via the welfare system, everything started falling apart. 
um, and uh, reading another another topic uh, talking going back to slavery. Uh, black Americans, it was illegal for black Americans to learn how to read. In fact, it was so illegal that if you were a white person, you were taught and you were, and you were caught teaching your slave to read, uh, you would be found guilty too. It was a serious wow. sin. The reason for that is uh, because they didn't want black people being educated because an educated mind can't be enslaved. Well, what's changed? Yeah, uh, look at true. the illiteracy rates in black America today. Look at Baltimore. Look at the inner cities. Look at, uh, we're in California. California, 70% of black boys could not pass a basic literacy exam. Nobody is talking about that. Wow. You have politicians that are standing on stage saying that all they care about is black Americans. They're not talking about everything that is harming black Americans today, everything that is recreating the very same plantations that we came from. Did you catch that brilliant line that Bernie had in one of the debates, which is he wants, he's not only so pro-marijuana that he wants it to be legal, but he also wants to have uh, black, black, black business owners owning black marijuana shops right. in black mm -hmm. communities. I did not catch that. And again, line. I say this, I say this as someone that's pro legalizing right. weed, but like we're going to incentivize black people to own black marijuana right. shops in black communities. That that Right. And and, and but that's and that's well, why I don't celebrate by the way why I am conservative on the marijuana front is because when you talk about where this is happening, Chicago I think just passed uh, you know marijuana laws. It is to me I I, I know it's it, it's going to lead to more dysfunction um you know amongst Black America first and foremost because that's how it always is. Yeah. You know it's it, it's what is it about progressive policies that always leads to progressive results for the Black community first and foremost. And um so I I I am loath uh, to to be smart enough to see the debate between uh, alcohol and marijuana, so that I can't firmly say no to marijuana. But I have a thinking brain, and I just don't see how conservatives can make a sound argument against it at the moment. What else has to happen for the black community to break? Uh, I'm going to guess, although I don't have the book yet, that at the end you're going to you either make some predictions or you tell people what tools they need to, to really yeah. break out of this. Yeah, you know, it's, it's, it's not even about making predictions, and I have my own personal predictions, but I definitely am not doing that in the book. I'm giving black Americans a guide. I'm giving, I'm giving black Americans an option, mm -hmm. uh, the same option uh, that I saw before me uh, when I started waking up and I'm having this conversation with you. Um, you, can, you can have the option to accept this victim narrative, right? You can have the option to say, I accept this diagnosis of cancer, even though I feel fine, walk fine, and have been living fine my entire mm -hmm. life. I accept that it's terminal illness, and, and I'm going to live like I'm going to die any moment. Mm -hmm. Mm, yeah. um, or, or you can you can develop a different perspective, and you can develop a victor mentality, as I say. Forget the victim mentality. Develop a victor mentality. Yeah. Um, look back at at your ancestors. Look back at your your That's grandparents. Real, look back at what yeah. they did, uh, what they lived through, the, the seeds that they planted, so that you can afford to be in the circumstance that you are in today. If you are a Black American and you are breathing in the United States today, you are the luckiest among the luckiest of Black people that have ever lived anywhere on the face of the planet. That yeah. is an incredible statement. All of human history, the luckiest black people that have ever lived on the face of the human planet are the ones that are living and breathing in America today, okay? If you understand that, and you should understand it by simply saying, where would you like to live in Africa? For all that, 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 that hoopla about, they took us from Africa, find me a, a, a black American <laughs> that will tell you they want to move back to Africa. I will, listen, right now. Or Europe. Why I is it, will no. book, I, I'll book the flight for them. <laughs> Still right? pay for the Any flight. person that says we were stolen from our ancestors, I, Candace Owens, am pledging Ooh. that I will book the flights if you renounce your U.S. citizenship for you to go live back in Africa. You want, you want to cap this at maybe a 10 people nope. just in case people nope. are punking there's you? there's none. There's none. We did, this, we, we did the same craziness with the Trump. I hate America. <laughs> Everyone offered their money and flights. I think you might have. Don yeah, Peter I might have. Nobody took, nobody took the bait, right? Because they know America is the greatest place they could possibly live. Um, and I you think, know what? If someone takes you up on this, I'll guarantee one one first class upgrade. That's amazing. I, I will do that. There we go, right here. I will one do that. First class upgrade there to go, go to America, but you have to renounce your citizenship yeah. to, to America yeah. and, move, and move to Africa. That's really what you want to do. If you're looking for more boy, honest and a, thoughtful conversations ooh, that's about. That's a bet, boy. That's a, that's a bet. I'm not doing that. I'm going to be honest. Who, who taking that uh, first class flight to Africa, bro? You? Are you taking it? And it's not to um, talk bad about Africa or anything, bro. It's like literally like, like she said, it's one of the best places. Like as much as we try to like crap on the USA and stuff like that. But it's like, I wouldn't want to leave. You know what I'm saying? Like, I mean, may maybe Canada or something like that. But like Canada, USA, bro, that that's where I'm at. You know what I'm saying? I, but I do know some people be going to um Japan and stuff like that. They say it'd be lit over there, too. I don't know, bro. I'm just talking at this point. Oh, but yeah, man, let me know in the comments below how you feel about this video, bro. Would you slide?
Would you slide? But she was speaking facts, man. She said, um, what she said right here? America first and foremost, because that's how it always is. He had no sense of kinship, no, no familial love. So I really kind of lay out that argument um, and, and talk about what slave life was really like. Uh, the break It was basically like they don't like um, educated black people, basically something like that. But that's that's true as well, bro. But uh, yeah, that's the end of the video, bro. If you enjoyed, like, comment, subscribe. Comment down below how you felt about this video and let me know what I should check out next, man. Just comment down below and hit notification bell so you're here when I check it out, man. I'll see y'all later, man. Peace.